Hi guys, welcome back to another video on the Shadow Run Returns editor. And in this video, well, at the end of the last video, we made a little exterior, or I hope you made a little exterior. Um, and I think I said we were going to make a, a means of transitioning from one scene screen region to another. And so we're just going to do that on this video, and it, it won't take awfully long. And then, you know, if there's a little bit of time, we'll do something else that's fun. But for now, we'll just focus on transitioning between these these regions. So this is not a scene transition. I should say that straight away. Uh, the structure of a Shadowrun campaign, Shadowrun Returns campaign, is multiple scenes. Everything within one of these screens is a scene. Um, and they'll all be listed in here. And those scenes are then linked together uh, to create missions. So your hub will be one particular scene, and you'll leave that hub to go to another scene for a mission. You'll come back to the hub, you'll go to another scene, you'll come back to the hub, and so on and so forth. But within a scene, within any given mission, any given single location, you'll have to have transitions between the floors of a building, between an interior and an exterior. And that's all just done by having uh, separate and discrete camera regions like this, which you'll need to be able to move between. So probably the, the simplest and commonest way of doing this uh, in real space, that is not in the matrix, which uses a different system, is through the use of new regions. And so what are we going to do is we're going to have this doorway of this building here is going to, they don't quite line up, but it's going to lead to, I'll put a doorway in here, or maybe I won't, but anyway, it'll lead here. This, this, this is the door as far as we're concerned, but it doesn't matter. It can be. So we'll have the player be able to transition between this space and this space here. And to do that, we're going to need a couple of regions, um, a couple of invisible props, and maybe a couple of triggers. So let's just get started. So, and again, if you need to, just go and create an exterior, just another scene somewhere else where you can tra transition between. So I'm going to right click and create a region. And it'll give us one of these guys we're familiar with from the earlier tutorials. And I'm going to drag him out to a space about that big. I'm going to put him right there. And I'm going to leave his region type as a normal region. And I'm going to give this region a name now. I use a particular convention when I'm using doors and transitions. This door is the inside door, and it's going to lead outside. And so the name that I'll give is in hyphen out. I'm then going to copy him. Control C, Control V, and paste. And I'm going to put a copy just outside the exterior. And I'm going to rename this one to out hyphen in. Next, I'm going to need two invisible props, um, which don't block movement. So invisible prop non-solid. And I'm going to drop one right in front of the door. And I'm going to Control and paste, sorry, copy and paste, another one, roughly where we want our door to be inside. And the inside prop, same, I'm going to say in, out. And the outside prop, I'm going to call out and in, out hyphen, in. Again, you can do whatever you want, but... Um, and these props will, once we've given them interactions, um, start to appear in our list of scene contents. So if we take the out in prop and we add in an interaction type, and I'm going to use generic inter interaction, which can be anything. We can then choose an icon and door will be fine and click apply. And now in interactable props, out in appears. And I'll do the same for the interior prop. I'll give it a generic interaction. And give it a door. We could use any, you know, any icon we want. So now these two props appear here. Now, if we were making a bigger map with lots more doors, we'd have to give some further, um, some further way of differentiating these two doorways from any other doorways we had in the, you know, in the maps. But you know, for now, this works. So we've got interactable props, which will show doors when we look at them, that can be clicked on, and we've got regions. So now I'm going to create two triggers. Um, and basically, the trigger will say when this prop is interacted with, the uh, the actor which does the interaction will be teleported 
to this region inside and the team with them um, and then the camera will also be teleported along with them and that's fairly simple so I'm just going to create a new trigger create trigger and I'll call this trigger out hyphen in and I will say when I'm looking for item interaction when existing interactable objects when out in is interacted with and then I'm going to say teleport actor and I'm going to say teleport all actors on team shadow run or shadow runners to a triggering target point well the triggering target point is the center of this region in out so I'm going to say to function center of region existing region in out and we're going to have them face I think this is facing down towards the bottom right I think that's east and face east so when that exterior door prop is interacted with the actors on team shadow runner will be teleported to the center of this region and they'll face east and then up top I'm going to click retain this trigger after firing by default once a trigger is fired it is discarded and won't be checked again obviously we want to retain this trigger because the player could be going backwards and forwards and then I'm going to right click well actually sorry the second uh, do action I need is to right click and then I think it might be under gameplay yeah it's going to be teleport camera to actor and I'm going to say teleport ca uh, camera to triggering actor that should be fine um, if it's not we can set another condition for example we can teleport camera to player character zero or whatever but triggering actor should be okay um, warp teleport all actors on team shadow runners to the center of the region and set the uh, set the direction so now I'm going to duplicate this trigger and I'm going to rename it in out and then we just reverse the process so when in out is interacted with we're going to warp all the actors on shadow runners in dimension nothing selected to center of point and again we choose the out in region the region that functions as the doormat for this door so existing regions <clears throat> out in and they will again face east down to this bottom right so obviously this doorway to walk into it they're going to go sort of west or northwest but then when you get inside you're going to be facing the opposite direction so as a as a, a cosmetic issue if I was, was making this uh, making this map seriously or properly I would probably try to align the doorway so that they seem to flow in the right direction but it's just a cosmetic issue and again the uh, the camera will teleport to the triggering actor once that has been completed so we can move inside and outside I'm going to save the game and I think the only other thing I really want to do in this video is we haven't really yet talked about scene properties up here on the top this is where we define the loading screen for our scene and some other bits and pieces as you can see um, so let's give this scene a title and this scene is just going to be about helping Barry so I'm just going to call this um, Rescue Barry I know these aren't very good names or anything like that and all the dialogue's pretty crappy but it's just to, to sort of get you used to things and we'll give it a subtitle Barry needs a hand and then the scene synopsis is the loading text where you can sort of put you know it was a dark and stormy evening or something like that um, it was a dark and stormy night in Cyber Tokyo. God, I can't type. Um, and we can also choose a loading image. Now, I think, I think, I think, I think, you can import your own loading images. I've never done it myself. What I tend to do, because I'm kind of lazy, is I like to load up HK Coder Loading Images Epilogue S1, which is a nice, there are a couple of them, I think. But it's a nice black screen. But what I think you can do is take a screenshot, and if it's in the right uh, resolution and the right sort of format, you can have the uh, content pack recognize it in the appropriate folder. 
and then you could sort of take a screenshot of your level and then import it as the loading image for that level which um, is what's done in the base game you know you've got all these loading images from the base game and they are all appropriate to particular levels but if you're feeling like you don't really want to do that or that they're not appropriate for your particular levels the epilogue um, loading image is just plain black which works absolutely fine so I'm going to select that um, and you can see you can do quite a lot of interesting things here a few interesting things here team advancement window move beyond camera region which I never use um, don't use the button press which might be useful for example when you're very first uh, starting the game for your introductory sequence there's another tag up here uh, tab up here which we've never talked about which is team affiliations I don't think I've mentioned although I will have mentioned in passing that we can create our own teams by default you have four teams in the game Shadowrunners, Gangers, Lone Star and Civilians which have a relationship defined for all the other teams already and if you wanted to make another team to fulfill a specific function within the game it's just as simple as pressing the green button and having you know new team I know it already said that and then you can go in here and set you know who they're friendly and who they're enemies and who they're neutrals to so that's a completely arbitrary thing and then you can just delete them as quickly as that um, again this is such a flexible editor you can do a huge amount with it we can also use these dimensions and things for um, setting up the matrix and maybe we'll do a video just about the matrix I what I will say um, just for the moment and we'll cover it in more detail if I make one about the matrix is transitions between areas in the matrix is typically handled differently from this um, and typically in the matrix there will be another special kind of region a region here a matrix transition between areas will be a region type teleporter and what you can normally do then is just say strictly as soon as an actor enters this region they're immediately teleported to another region which is paired with this one and you'll be familiar with that if you've used the matrix in these games whenever you approach a portal at the end of an area you automatically move on to the next one and that's how that's done but we'll talk about that in more detail later we've got our regions to transition between so let's just save and test I'm going to test scene hire main character Just gonna have a little think. I really enjoy making these videos. I like talking about Shadowrun. Nobody watches them, but I enjoy talking about it anyway. And it forces me to think about to think about this game a bit more. Uh, which is useful because sometimes there we go. We've got our uh, we've got our loading scene. Rescue Barry. It was a dark and stormy night in Cyber Tokyo. <laughs> I don't know where the uh, where the subtitle goes. Maybe it's in maybe it's in the menu when we're in the map. I'm gonna click continue. Choose a few characters. We're gonna have a lot of Isabels. I'm gonna go ahead. <clears throat> All we're gonna do is test that this um, that this scene transition is working. That's a bit too loud for me. <clears throat> Rescue Barry, it was a dark and stormy night inside of Tokyo. That's great, that's fantastic. There we go. Now, when we click on this door, we could have given that a name, but who cares, right? We appear outside, and there's a nice discreet sort of fade out. Now we can run around outside. Um, there's a few little issues with this tile set that I'm using. This is the barren sidewalk. Um, doesn't quite line up there's a bit of a seam there uh, but we can run around and again we retain the trigger after firing that's very important um, so that we can transition between our scenes uh, I think that's gonna be about it what I'm gonna do next well let's um let's talk about the next video let's mute that for a second Okay, so on the next video, this might be this is going to be a short one, but the next one might be a longer one. Let's start linking scenes together. So before the next video, what I want you to do, if you're following along, which nobody is, but I'm sure one of you might do, is up here on the left, file, new scene. You can either use an existing map, and you could just, for example, import the hub from Shadowrun Hong Kong if you want. But I would advise against it because it will have a lot of functionality set up that we want to do ourselves. But in any case, um, 
File, New Scene, and I would say Create New Map. Let's do it now. And so we'll get a new canvas, and I'm just going to drop down a single piece of floor from God knows where, like Hioi there. Hioi, I don't know if that's how you. Uh, well, we'll use Hub. Maybe that's all the Hub stuff. And I'm going to put down a single piece of floor. There we go. And I'm going to file, save scene as, and I'm going to call this tutorial hub. And it'll have a little thing. Hopefully it won't crash. Fantastic. So now we've got a hub <clears throat> as a separate scene. If you're going to want to follow along, flesh out this scene, make a little hub. All it has to be is like a single building and some way of, you know, that you would imagine the player being able to leave their hub, whether it's a road or a vehicle or a, 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 the MTR subway or a boat or anything you like. But, you know, just a space where they can live and just flesh it out a little bit and put some, put some stuff in there. And in the next video, I will have also made a hub or I would, will have imported a hub from one of my other UGCs. And we'll start to put in the functionality to transition through the hub and to advance uh, a a story that can change over time and with actors that can move around we'll put in some vendors maybe um, I want to talk about the matrix and stuff like that at some point but for now let's just focus on building ourselves a little hub off camera and then I'll make another video in maybe a week or so or hopefully less than that maybe tomorrow who knows and yeah we'll go from there we'll, we'll work on the hub thanks for watching see you next time